Hi, welcome to What is G minus 2 of the muon? Part 2. So in part 1, we saw what a magnetic moment was from the perspective of electromagnetism. Now we're going to see how the magnetic moment, particularly of the muon, fits into particle physics. So we saw that the magnetic moment mu of an electron or muon is related to its energy in a uniform magnetic field. So the energy E is equal to minus the magnetic moment mu dotted into the magnetic field B. And we also saw that the magnetic moment is related to the spin. So in both the electron and muon cases, the magnetic moment is proportional to the spin and to the charge. And this is also where the factor G shows up. So in the magnetic moment of the electron, mu E, we have a factor of G E. And in the magnetic moment of the muon, mu sub mu, we have a factor of G mu. OK, so now let's also mention one other thing about the magnetic moment mu of a particle. Again, let's take a magnetic field pointing in the vertical direction. Into this magnetic field, we're going to place an electron with its spin s pointing downward, but at an angle to the magnetic field. Because the electron has negative charge, its magnetic moment mu points in the direction opposite to the spin s. So if we do this, the direction of the magnetic moment mu, and therefore also the direction of the spin s, will not remain constant. Instead, the magnetic moment will move in a circle around the magnetic field B. This is called Larmor precession. The frequency of this precession is related to the size of the magnetic moment mu and therefore to the g factor. Since we said we were talking about an electron, that means it's related to g e. Now in a future video, we'll see how this phenomenon relates to measuring the magnetic moment of the muon and therefore g mu. So the magnetic moment of an electron or of a muon is related to how it interacts with an electromagnetic field. And a quantum of the electromagnetic field, you can think of it as a particle of light, is the photon, which we call gamma. This means that the magnetic moment of the electron or muon is also related to how it interacts with the photon. Now, we represent interactions between particles using Feynman diagrams. So for example, here's a Feynman diagram for the interaction of an electron with the photon gamma. It represents an electron emitting or absorbing a photon. Here we have the same thing, but for a muon. If we write down the simplest diagram of a muon, or for that matter, for an electron, interacting with the electromagnetic field, it describes an interaction with G equal to 2. Now we should note that this value of G equal to 2 that comes from considering this simplest diagram is itself a highly non-trivial result and we're not going to derive it here. It was obtained by Dirac in 1928 when he wrote down a quantum mechanical description of an electron with spin consistent with special relativity. In contrast, if we had calculated G for the spinning ring from part one, 
substituting the ring's angular momentum for s, we would have gotten g equal to 1 for that example. OK, so now let's get back to the Feynman diagrams. So we saw that the simplest diagram gave g equal to 2. But there are other contributions to g. These other contributions change g to be something not equal to 2. So when we measure g minus 2, we are measuring the size of these other contributions. And the quantity a mu, which is just g minus 2 of the muon divided by 2, is what is called the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon. OK, so what are these other contributions that make g not equal to 2? So here's the Feynman diagram for the next largest piece in the muon magnetic moment. Just like the diagram we saw before, it has a muon emitting or absorbing a photon gamma. But this time, there's also a second photon that is emitted and reabsorbed by the muon. Now, why might this diagram contribute to the muon magnetic moment? Let's look at what's going on in the middle of that diagram. If we try to measure g minus 2 of the muon, we're looking at how the muon interacts with the electromagnetic field. Experimentally, we take a muon and apply an electromagnetic field and observe how the spin of the muon changes as a result. So what we know about are the incoming muon, the applied electromagnetic field, and the outgoing muon. We're blind to the details of what happens in the middle of the process. So experimentally, we can't distinguish between the case where an extra photon was radiated and reabsorbed by the muon and the case where it wasn't. So this diagram can also contribute to muon g minus 2. So this piece is called the Schwinger term. The Schwinger term takes g from 2 to 2 plus alpha over pi, where alpha is something called the fine structure constant. Now alpha is usually written in terms of its inverse, which is about 137. But it's actually extremely well measured. So here we give the value of alpha, and you can see that its error bar is in the last two digits quoted. So now, with the Schwinger term, g takes on a value that is slightly more than 2. And this means that a mu, the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon, which is just g minus 2 of the muon over 2, takes on a value that is non-zero. Now, the Schwinger term is the largest correction, but it is not the only one. In fact, contributions from thousands of diagrams have been computed. These contributions are also important for calculating g minus 2 of the muon. And these additional contributions will also have uncertainties. Now in principle, we can calculate these contributions and their uncertainties to g minus 2 of the muon. However, actually there are an infinite number of diagrams. And this means we also have to take into account uncertainties resulting from any contributions that we didn't calculate. So this will get us the standard model prediction for g minus 2 of the muon and its uncertainty. And then that prediction can be compared to experiment. In the next video, the value of g minus 2 of the muon predicted in the standard model, we'll talk about the classes of corrections and their uncertainties. 
and then we'll discuss how the prediction and current measurement compare and what their difference could imply.